Hello, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to more CSGO news. This, of course, being now our, our, our series. It's going to be the fourth episode of CSGO feuds, CSGO fights, whatever you guys want to call it. If you guys have not actually watched these series before, what you do is I leave two comments down below. You guys upvote the comment you think or the side you think actually wins this fight. This time around, if you guys could not tell by the, the title or the uh, thumbnail itself, it will be Swole Patrol versus E United. Now, I, I want to preface a few things. It's not like going to be an onslaught. Don't take your revenge or don't take your anger out either side here, especially E United when I tell you guys the story. If you guys are new to the CSGO scene, you might not know a few of these facts, but we're going to break down the simple and, and short proof of E United and how they actually killed Swole Patrol altogether. Uh, also, a second thing, I know Swole Patrol is not an organization, but in terms of a title as well as uh, a thumbnail, it's a lot less anticlimactic when I say E United killed a CSGO team. It sounds pretty cool when I say they killed an entire organization. So I apologize for that. Let's break it down though. You guys have seen our drama in the past. Our latest one was actually Windigo, their CEO versus CSGO player Spellin. We had Refresh versus Smuya, JW versus Taco. This time around, let's break it down for all of you. Swole Patrol versus E United, how E United killed off an entire esports organization. And to actually go back way, way back, the start of 2018 when it all started, that being Freegazord and Cooper, if you guys have somehow no idea, these are two brothers who play professional CSGO. Very cool. And at the start of 2018, it was incredibly cool because these guys joined up and formed the roster of Swole Patrol. They had many runs throughout ESCA Premier. Uh, if you guys are not aware, there are attempts to actually make the Pro League. If you win or actually place top two eventually in ESCA Premier, you can actually earn a spot into Pro League, which is the goal of many pro players out there. They had a few unsuccessful runs although very solid runs while doing so. Eventually, actually changing out their roster, they add Marky, they add Zelsis, the likes of Swag to the roster as well, and it was pretty stacked. They were always one of your better premier teams, and eventually when they got Swag and Zelsis and Marky, they definitely started to click, and they certainly saw some success shortly thereafter. It was actually October, they managed to qualify for their first big official land together, that being Epicenter. We can see by Cooper's tweets, other tweets out there, the excitement for these guys as they rose to the North American ranks, qualifying for their first official land at Epicenter. They did really poorly at the event, but overall a victory because they managed to qualify and that success was apparent. And also, unfortunately enough for these guys, their success was also being noticed by other organizations out there. And one of those organizations was E United. It was actually Freegazoid late one evening. I was here in the office when he took the live stream. He also, first of all, he took to Twitter, uh, since deleted a few of these tweets as well, emotionally tweeting very obviously um, in a pretty hard time because it was his own brother. Rumors were he was actually confirming this before it was was announced by E United themselves or even HLTV. It was Freakazoid taking a live stream talking about Cooper, who had taken a deal to leave the Swole Patrol roster, abandoned them uh, during their third attempt at ESA Premier, their third attempt to make Pro League. He will be leaving this roster, guys, for E United, and of course, leaving them without a fifth member to actually pursue their hopes and dreams of making Pro League by themselves. Now, Freakazoid was obviously very emotional. His very own brother, I can definitely, I can try and understand that. I don't have a brother, and, uh, you know, I don't have a professional CSGO brother I used to play with. With, so I can only understand to a certain extent how emotional he was. It was actually Freakazoid very much clarifying in the in the latter half of this clip, I'll show you guys very shortly, that once they actually tried to make Pro League, he would take the rest of these guys under his wing on um, his team. They'd actually pick up a fifth member from E United, that being Ace, to replace Cooper. So keep that in mind. He would take this team as far as possible, as he does state. But once they try and make Pro League, if they either they do or they do not, he would also be leaving that roster. If you don't want to play, that's fine. Like... Because honestly, uh, I know that I'm heated right now, but I'm thinking logically, if this is the way it's going to be, then I apologize to my team and I should have texted them and let them know, which actually I did. Uh, I'm not going to play with them anymore. And I know it's going to upset them, but I have to kind of go my own way and go my own route. So after I'll help them out towards the NBL season, I'll try and win and get them into pro. Regardless if we make pro or not, I'm quitting and I'm going to... I'm going, uh, I'm just not going to play. And like I said previously, with Ace on that roster, they kind of got Ace on loan from United in place of Cooper, who was taken away. So a little bit of a gift for a little bit of a take, I guess you could say, for United. But it started a miraculous run for these guys throughout Premier, um, actually only losing one game the entire season, going 18-1, and one, eventually making Global Land Challenge Finals, and qualifying for Pro League. It was an amazing run, seeing the rise of these guys throughout the past two seasons. Their third season together, they've actually finally clicked, and did so in dominating fashion, and they reached the old 
ultimate goal of qualifying for Pro League. Unfortunately enough, here is where everything slowly started to unravel. Now, like I said previously, they got Ace from E United. Well, unfortunately enough, his loan was then up. So E United takes him back. This team is then down to four members after qualifying for Pro League. Ironically enough, the guy that, you know, the team that took away Cooper gave them Ace. They take back Ace. The team is now down to four members. And shortly thereafter, within two weeks, they lose Zelsis to Cloud9. And as planned, they lose Freakazoid because he said he would leave the team once they qualified. He leaves for Ghost Gaming. Now, let's not freak out too much. It did seem all of that was to plan. Freakazoid pretty much, it seemed like he knew he was going to be joining Ghost for quite some time there. They're down to just a couple members, but do not worry. We actually have some Singularity players, that of course being Vanity and Food to join that roster, as well as Som. He comes in as a stand-in player, and we have a full roster once again, barely saved. Almost broken by United for the second time, but they are barely saved. They come together as pretty much, you could say, a random five. They have some history there together. Of course, Marky and Swag, Vanity and Food, there's definitely chemistry, and then and then Som is there as well. There's definitely a meshing of these guys, but no one's expecting quite to the level of what they were formerly of Swole Patrol, especially as they saw that immediate rise. Now, let me say one thing. I don't blame these players whatsoever in the situation. So when you guys choose to side with Swole Patrol and Swag or choose to side with United, that's fully up to you guys. It's crazy to see that Freakazoid actually built his way up to Ghost Gaming, Zelsis to Cloud9, so on and so forth. When we end this story, it's great to see these players actually going to better places, although there's always going to be one player left behind and you'll see who that is. So this random assortment of five players just barely saved. They actually start playing a few qualifiers out there. One in particular though, these guys qualify for a huge LAN almost right off the gate. They still have that Pro League spot, keep in mind, but this new, uh, of course, Vanity and Food joining the roster alongside Sam as a stand-in, they then qualify for IEM Sydney. It's amazing, it's crazy to see Unfortunately enough, within a week, it seems that a majority of the roster that qualified for IEM Sydney is potentially leaving the roster, and in fact, they actually did, but who did they leave for? E United. The guys in the back, the guys with the little bag, offering money here and there. Yes, they actually take away the same majority roster, and get this, at the IEM Sydney qualifiers, they take away the majority of the roster that beat them not just once, but beat them twice to take the spot. Yes, Marky, Vanity, and Food, they all leave Swole Patrol for E United, but as a part of Swole Patrol, they took down E United in the semifinals and again in the grand finals to actually take the IEM spot. So what does E United do? And again, I'm not fully blaming these guys. I understand to a certain degree. You know the old phrase, if you can't beat them, join them. In this case, if you can't beat them, just buy them. And here we stand all the way back since the start of 2018. A quick recap, and I'm not trying to sound angry. I think it's, you know, as an organization standpoint for E United, they played it out well. Their team definitely had struggles. They've lost to quite a few members themselves. They tried Dazzle, they tried Skylar, they tried meshing so many characters. FNS as well, also leaving the roster as they try and scramble people to different roles. It just does not fit. As an organization, they were left with very limited options, but how they went about doing it from an outside perspective seems pretty crazy. Overall, pretty smart by them, but if we go back to 2018, right, first they take Cooper. At the time, definitely one of the better players for the Swole Patrol roster. You think, Swole Patrol, they might be dead in the water. They rise back up. They take Ace from E United. They qualify for Pro League. E United says, hey, your loan's back up, man. We got to pull you back out. They almost submerge these guys underwater again. Swole Patrol, they hang on. They hang on again. They get Som as a stand-in player. Then they lose Freakazoid. Then they lose Zelsis. And you think, oh my goodness, these guys are going to they're gonna go down the hole this time. There's no recovering from this. They pick up Vandy and Food from Singularity very last second. And those guys survive. They qualify for a large land at IEM Sydney. And E United steps back in one last time. They punch him once with Cooper. They give another punch, taking away Ace after giving them to him. But of course, the loan, you really can't argue too much about that. That's not, you know, that's not necessarily their fault. And the final finishing move they take away the majority roster that knocked them out of the IEM Sydney spot they technically I, I we believe no confirmation take the IEM Sydney spot and now you have swag without an entire roster yes he has some as a potential stand-in swag probably not have an IEM Sydney spot we have no clue if he's going to keep his ESO Pro League spot and who is the ultimate winner in all of this well, you guys can leave a vote down below. I will leave two comments for all of you guys. You know what to do. Leave a thumbs up on the comment or the side you think won it. I'm not trying to say who you think is the, the rightful person here. I'm not trying to say who you think is the better person here. Who won the ultimate exchange of these two organizations? Swole Patrol kind of a team. E United is more of an organization. Who won, guys? Swole Patrol and Swag 
or E United. Hope you guys all enjoy. Uh, I'm sorry if I got a little angry there. I just watched NRG go 0-3 in the IEM Katowice Legend stage, so I'm pretty pissed off. Hope you guys all enjoy. My name is Jake. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Uh, have a good night, peeps.